folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. I am excited. This is a product I have wanted to show you folks, well, for, for a long time, you know, and in fact, I've been talking to this company for, started probably about four years ago, I guess. Um, and they've had, they, they were making a lot of continual improvements or continuous improvements on it. And we're, we're finally here. Okay. Ready to show you. I've had this sitting around for a little while too. It's a soil conditioner, all right? But it's not just a soil conditioner like anything else on the market because it's actually a reasonable price point, you know, compared to some of the other brands that are out there, even even one that's on our website, it's it's just thousands and thousands cheaper. So this is still an expensive attachment. We'll get to that, or you can go to the website. You know, we don't put pricing in videos. The reason for that is not to frustrate you, but because these videos are out here forever, all right? And pricing changes over time. So if you're really interested in it, you'd wanna go to the website anyway to get the price, but to get all the feature lists, the, the specifications, everything else, all the information you wanna know about it, you can buy it there too. We're gonna to take you through the features of this soil conditioner here. Now I went for a five foot model. The reason I did that is because I wanted to try to use this on multiple tractors to showcase it over time. So this is a John Deere 1025R. If you were running it just on a 1025R, they do have a four foot model available as well. But I plan to run this on my Coyote CK. And so I wanted something a little bit bigger and we're gonna see if it works on both. I, I don't know, I think it'll work just fine, but there's a chance I have not used this yet. You can see it's, it's sparkling. The paint's not messed up or anything. It's still brand new. So we're gonna use it for the first time today. A little bit of a learning curve I'm expecting. So I think that that is um, something most folks can relate with, right? I, it would be easy for me to show this stuff after I've used it for a while and it's working just flawlessly. And that's maybe the smarter way to do things. But I also think it's helpful because uh, the first impression for most folks may be different from somebody who's used it for years and they're not having a good experience. And so if it helps relate, you know, if it helps you relate to that, me maybe struggling with this, maybe I don't, maybe it's super straightforward, we'll find out. But that's the reason I do this. Let's go through this one. It's the compact model for compact tractors or subcompact tractors. They also have several other series, so you can get this all the way up into uh, to fit a utility tractor or large compacts too. Skid steers, mini skids, they're gonna have models available to fit pretty much everything that's on the market, all right? So this is gonna be category one, three point compatible, also quick hitch compatible. We have the Speedco Cat one on there, made in the USA. And then the PTO shaft is included. Uh, just a, a side note, if we sell something that runs off the rear PTO, the PTO shaft is always included. So we haven't made a, a point of historically mentioning that in listings, we probably should, and we'll probably update that over time, but PTO shafts are always included. That's not something you have to get separate. It is gonna have driveline protection with a slip clutch as well, so no shear bolt on here. All right, you're gonna see we've got some hydraulic hoses hooked up over here. You know what, Chris, we need to get some Outback wrap on, on these. These are kind of looking disorganized, so we will, we'll get some Outback wrap on there and, and uh, get them organized up, but you do not have to get hydraulic angling. You can get a manual angle if you want to, but we have the hydraulics on our tractor. Go to Summit Hydraulics website, save 5% with code GWT. But if you plan on using a tool like this, I really think hydraulic is the way to go if you can swing it. I mean, you know, you're gonna have to have it in your budget, but it's just- a, Is that a pun, if you can swing it? Oh, yeah, it is. A, it, it turned out to be a pun, yeah. Good catch. But I think, you know, anything you can do from the operator seat on the fly is just sweet. I mean, it just saves so much time. It makes you so much more efficient. And we also have a hydraulic top link on here. All right, so we can adjust the pitch of this forward and back as needed, not just with this tool, but with a plethora of tools. So pretty awesome there. Uh, why do you angle a tool like this? I'm, I'm trying to run through the use cases and I'm not sure why you wouldn't pull it parallel. Well, sometimes you want to run it straight because you're just looking to bring material straight forwards and backwards, but other times you are going to want to gradually shift material, whether you're doing a driveway or maybe even um, grading out your yard and you want to have the slope go a certain direction, it can be helpful and beneficial to have uh, this angled one way or the other to draw material from a certain pathway to another one and help uh, feather it out. You know, and that's going to work in tangent with these guards that we'll get to as well, where you could you could box the material in or keep one side open and have the other side boxed in, so it's still forcing more material one direction or the other. I actually noticed too, it looks like you can put the guards on either side. Is this designed to run forward or reverse? Oh yeah, you can put it on either side there. Um, I don't, it's not gonna be able to run reverse on here. I bet you, I'm, I'm gonna assume that these end plates are reused on multiple models like skid steer models or mini skid steer models. And so 
on those when you have hydraulic flow you can reverse the rotors to spin either direction but on a tractor you cannot reverse the pto so you're only going to have that rotor spinning in one direction and you're going to drive forward with it and so you know any manufacturer is going to look for cost savings measures and when you can reuse um, multiple components on there it's going to keep overall cost down inventory down and everything else so i'm assuming that's what they have going on there that'd be my my logical reason for it folks we are proud to be sponsored by rimguard solutions a liquid ballast weight it goes right inside your tires completely hidden not only is it going to help with safety keeping those rear tires planted on the ground it helps with loader efficiency and traction too the benefits of rimguard include being the heaviest all-natural liquid ballast weight on the market it's not going to corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride it's not going to freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com so while this is their smallest unit it's still stout i mean it does not look like there's anything that's chintzy or going to bend or give very easily on here at all the five foot model weighs about 600 pounds all right so this is it's hefty right and the 1025r with the hydraulic top link uh, gets this up off the ground you don't this isn't a tool that you need to really get up off the ground it rides on these rear no flat wheels and as long as you have the rotor off the ground, that's really all you need. But the uh, four foot model does weigh um, 550 pounds, so about 50 pounds less. And then it just goes up from there, depending on the heavier duty models that you want. There is a built-in parking stand here, which is really nice to have. Uh, helps this thing sit nice and level when you're not using it. It makes hooking up and unhooking that much easier. Some really good coverage with the guards that are here. These are two independent guards, so you can unbolt those separately if you want to. Now, one of the coolest things, I, I, I like, I like features that just work really well and they're and they're simple right there's no uh, it's you can just do this all by hand you can adjust these guards they can take them from the down position like they are right now and you can move them up into the stored position and out of the way uh, so that if you don't want to trap material or if you do want to trap material one or the other it's just super easy to do i mean it's i, I don't know I, I i've told you before i get uh, impressed by simple things but maybe that's oftentimes because a lot of times that's missing from manufacturers implementation so i appreciate that but again no flat tires back here these are going to be adjustable these arms so you can adjust them to whatever the setting is for your application or you find the situation that works for you or you adjust it on the um, as needed project by project uh, going to be chain drive okay so again we have the pto shaft coming into the slip clutch coming over to the side and this can be chain drive down here and it will come standard with carbide tips on the rotor teeth uh, I had a question that you covered, but I want to clarify. Yep. So the rotor is fixed. Yes. And depth control is. is depth it, is, control two ways with your, your three point raising up and down, and then you've got the the wheels, the gauge wheels on the back too. And, and so gauge wheels, you have it looks like the pin connections, but then you also have the spacers. Yeah. Yeah, you got the spacers, which you know similar to what's found on like. Um, the sweep all that we sell or, or affiliate partner or um, the finish, finish mowers, the finish mowers, you know, yes. that kind of thing. It's that's a pretty common setup that's on there. A little bit about serviceability as well. You'll notice there's grease zerks in uh, the critical locations here, um, uh, right back here underneath the, uh, the shaft and then on the wheels as well. Access to all your critical areas are just bolted on, right? So these covers are all bolted on here and on the side for the chain case housing too. So everything is pretty straightforward. You even have the no flat tires, so there's nothing to worry about uh, going flat in the field. And I forgot until I looked down underneath here, but there is a really stiff, heavy duty rubber guard down here just to protect debris from flying back at anybody. Now this is what this piece of equipment should look like. Dirty. <laughs> we had fun using this today. You know, started out in the easiest application, just on my gravel driveway out by the barn, just to kind of get a feel for what's going on with it, how to use it, how to get it to function and act and, and you know, get the right cut, so to speak, on there too. And uh, then went down to, we had some serious washout. It's the first washout I've ever had, but we've had torrential storms here this summer, like just, just crazy amounts of rain. We have tornadoes roll through. We've had multiple tornado warnings. Um, it's been pretty nuts. Um, and so we did have some washout there and, and I went over it previously with the, uh, the heavy duty rake, the, the Thatcher rake, and that, did fine but it, it did the, the thatcher rake doesn't really cut down into the material kind of it will pull in material and fill the gaps but this is what i needed to kind of kind of churn everything up and then fully grade it out and so it worked perfectly for that um and then took it here to some dirt right this is a there's a dirt path that goes from one side of the property to the other 
and it had been rough because it had, again, we've had so much rain and now it went from so much rain to now we haven't had rain in weeks. So it's, it's either, it's one or the other, that's how it goes, right? But um, so now it's, it's dried out, but it's got all these ruts and everything from when it was wet. And so it, it, it needed to be graded out. And I think that this did really well. The one area that, uh, the one thing that I think pulverizers, conditioners, holly rakes, all those kinds of tools don't do amazingly well at is with sod. And so you'll see the areas here that did have a little bit of sod and, and they, they struggle more with that versus um, bare dirt or bare material like aggregate. And if this was a serious sod issue here, then I would probably spray it off and kill it first and then uh, you know give it a week or so and then come through after that, that the root system is, is weakened and tackle it at that point. So that'd be an additional step you'd want to consider. Um, I've used you know multiple brands, uh, whether it's Ironcraft, Reist, and now Nortec, the Raptor soil conditioners. And so they're all in the same boat there. That's just not one of the things that they do really well on. And the same thing even with the pulverizer like from Dirt Dog, that kind of goes designed to rip through hard pack and smooth it out as well. It's the same concept there. Um, you know, folks will say the same thing with a box blade too. So just a, a weakness in general, but it did tear up a lot of the sod. If we were to go over it multiple more times, I just don't really need to. I have no need to do that. So I'm not gonna take the effort and the time to do so, but performed really well. That was a pretty easy learning curve. Um, more or less just figuring out how far to drop down the three-point hitch, how to adjust the hydraulic top link just to make contact the way that I wanted to. Beyond that, you're just kind of feathering it and playing with it. You know, the mirrors help if you have mirrors to take a look. So it probably did help that I have previous experience with a soil conditioner too, but not a not an overly complicated tool to figure out how to how to use and how to get it to work, but it is nice to have the adjustments in all these different locations to make it that much more versatile. If you do need to bust up a lot of sod, just get a tiller for that. So that's that's a tool to tackle sod, but otherwise this is this is this is versatile. We use this in multiple areas out here. Um, I can see an ongoing need for this when we do have washouts or other projects or trails or anything else for maintenance. So of course landscapers are gonna find this very useful uh, to grade out yards and other projects that they have going on. But get these from goodworkstractors.com. Again, for small tractors, large tractors, skid steers, mini skids, you name it, there's gonna be a solution to fit your needs. These are gonna ship factory direct right to you. It helps keep the cost down overall. So that way you can get the product you need at the best price possible. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.